First United Methodist Church of Dardanelle. We invite you to join us for this Easter celebration today. We're thankful for the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We invite you into worship, and as we go to worship together, let's bow our heads and we will begin with prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we celebrate the resurrection victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, who did rise from the dead to prove that all of the promises of God are good for us. And we celebrate today with hallelujahs and shouts of praise. And we thank you that we have the promise of eternal life through Christ our Savior and Lord. Now join us and let your spirit flow amongst us that we might go out with joy and share good news with the world. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. We invite you to uh, not only worship with us, but check out our other resources at fumcdardanelle.org, or you may call us at our office at 479-229-3720. As we begin our worship, let's affirm our faith in God together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We're going to continue our worship now as we think about those names that uh, we have on our prayer list. We invite you to check it out at our website again. Uh, but we do continue to pray for these folks. Buster Berryhill, Justin Hook, Chris Merritt, Rebecca Shannon, Ron Merritt, Barbara Pfeiffer, Pat Crabtree, Dwight Atkinson, Bud Choate, Steve Lawrence, Kathleen Balloon, William Ellis. As we continue to think about those whose names have not been called out or those who may be sick or homebound, we go to God now in silent prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day so long ago, you rolled the stone away and came forth triumphant over death and sin. You have won a great victory for us who celebrate today and we give our thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Now we live with the knowledge of your Holy Spirit present to empower our living we live with the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we celebrate that life can be full and abundant and eternal even here and now as you live amongst us. Help us as we share the gospel of good news for this world of your righteousness coming through the sacrifice of Jesus, your son. And as we do so, our hearts are torn because of the trouble in this world. Even though we celebrate today, we know that many mourn because of evil that is at loose in this world. There is violence among peoples. There is war being made against nations. And we pray that your peace might come to those places that are so torn by the violence and brutality that uh, this world has unleashed. Now as we pray for those who have been made sick and we ask that they be held before your throne of grace that there they might find healing. Those who support them we ask for your power and presence to be with them as they support and love those who are receiving medical care. And we pray for those who are homebound or elderly or ill that uh, must remain home today. We ask for your very presence in their hearts that they might know joy in your presence and the promise that has been made through your resurrection victory. We give all of our thanks and praise, and now we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his own disciples. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our ushers are coming forward to take up tithes and offerings. And those of you who join us by video this morning, of course, cannot give to those ushers. But we're going to ask a prayer of consecration and as we do so, I, can, I, I would ask that you would consider making a gift uh, through check to the address that will be listed as uh, we uh, present the doxology afterwards, uh, or go to our website there and find the PayPal tab and make a contribution to support the ministries and the life of this church in the world. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we ask you to ordain that these gifts might be multiplied many times over so that those who receive them might find again your presence through these gifts, that they might uh, be lifted up in praise toward God, and that your kingdom might be leveraged so that many more may come in to your kingdom. So we offer these gifts with thanksgiving in our hearts 
and praise to our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we offer them. Amen. If you'd like to join me in God's Word this morning, we're going to Psalm 118. This is the psalm that was uh, sung uh, at uh, the triumphal entry of Jesus on Palm Sunday. But today on Easter Sunday, we not only celebrate that He is risen, but that there can be joy in our hearts. For truly, this work has been done by God on behalf of us who didn't deserve it. Listen as we start at the 14th verse. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done many things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the miraculous victory of Jesus Christ over sin and death, our enemies. And today as we celebrate his resurrection victory, fill us with the joy and hope of the promise that has come through Jesus Christ and his victory on the cross. So be with us as we celebrate together. What a marvelous and great God that we have. For truly, this is a day to rejoice and celebrate. We give our thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, friends, we come together today and we acknowledge that we have a great Savior, a wonderful Lord. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And today is a day of celebration for us. While enjoying an early breakfast in a uh, northern Arizona cafe, four elderly ranchers discuss everything from cattle, horses, and weather to how things used to be in the quote-unquote good old days. And eventually the conversation moved on to their spouses. One gentleman turned to his uh, fellows and said, Roy, are you and your bride celebrating your uh, 50 wedding, 50th wedding anniversary soon? Yep, we sure are, Roy replied. Well, are you going to do anything special to celebrate, another man asked. Well, the old gentleman pondered this for a moment, and then he replied, You know, for our 25th anniversary, I took the missus to Tucson, Arizona. And for our 50th, I'm thinking about going back over there again and picking her back up. Hmm. Well, folks, we know marriage doesn't work that way, but we do have something to celebrate today. And it is an everlasting victory that has been promised to those who in faith trust Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you think that uh, your idea of celebration and uh, the one that we just uh, read about uh, might have missed the mark a bit, it was certainly by a wide margin. Some people don't need an excuse to celebrate. In fact, it appears that many people think that life ought to be one long celebration. But I'm not talking about the spiritual kind. I'm talking about those who uh, have the beer or liquor fuel blowouts that leave people passed out and inebriated. But it, they say, is a celebration, nevertheless. I believe that life ought to be a celebration that doesn't end. But it is a celebration of life itself and the eternal life that has come through Jesus Christ because we have hope of glory that we have found in our faith in Jesus. Now, if we celebrate a spiritual victory today, then truly we can celebrate this highest moment. We gather today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And because he has promised that we too can rise from the dead too because of our faith in him, we truly have something to celebrate. If not for this fact, we might not have any cause to celebrate at all. In fact, why would people even bother to gather at a church on Sundays 
if there were not the hope of glory ahead of them. So instead of the events of that day that is recorded in Scripture, I want to focus today on why Easter is such a special celebration day for Christians. My first faith lesson is that Jesus saw this day as a great victory. Jesus knew the Psalms. Jesus knew even in advance the victory that God would give him as he went to the cross if he remained faithful. The Messianic verses of our scripture this morning put the thoughts of God into Jesus' very mouth as he approaches this last week of his mortal life. Instead of gloom and doom thoughts, the thoughts of Jesus are over the final victory that God will give him. Death will no longer reign victorious after Jesus rises from the dead. His thoughts include those of the glorification that will come because he will become the gate through which the righteous may enter into life eternal with God. Even though he will be rejected and suffer, he understands that his sacrifice will be the foundation upon which God's mercy for those who trust in him will be able to now stand in God's presence, faultless and blameless. Such a mindset also includes the knowledge that the entire creation had been groaning since its very creation, waiting for its deliverance, waiting for sin to be done away with. God saw fit to let human beings follow their own willful way and their selfish desires, our selfish desires, sought to undo all the good that God had put into the creation. This is that groaning. In fact, without the help of God and God's great love for all people, they would forever, and when I say they, that includes us, folks, we would be forever excluded from God's kingdom and that life which is eternal and full. We have fallen short of his glory, but thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have been delivered into a new life, a new way of living. You know, without that communion with God, there is left for humanity only darkness, despair, and death. And as Christians, we understand that having lost our way and into the jaws of sin and death, the victory of Christ is our hope of salvation. And I can't think of any greater reason for you or me to celebrate, can you? Our Easter eggs and chocolate candies pale to convey the real joy we ought to feel in what God has done for us in Jesus our Lord. Now the second reason we celebrate, the second faith lesson, is that every Sunday gathering ought to be another Easter celebration. We make special preparations to celebrate on this day, but every Sunday we ought to come with the expectation of meeting the living God where we worship. For God has given us of his spirit. He has shared with us the presence of Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we come to worship the almighty God in this place. We ought to be humbled. We ought to be exultant in praise. Church worship services are somewhat like pep rallies for believers, or at least they ought to be. If the only reason we come here is for the preacher to sear our consciences or dangle us over the fires of hell, then folks, I'm going to tell you, that's a pretty sad reason for gathering. Every worship service should be built so that there are reminders within it of that great celebration of the victory of Jesus Christ and therefore his promise and celebration for our joy as we enter into God's kingdom. In Jesus' encounter with that Samaritan woman, it didn't take long before their conversation turned to worship, did it? And I would guess that it was a hot topic then as it was today. In fact, many people say you should never bring up politics or religion in a conversation, but I don't think that that's so wise because the very worth of a person is, is made manifest when we are concerned about their eternal life, the worth of their soul. I know that there are two ways to worship, the Samaritan way and the Jewish way that that, that woman told Jesus a long time ago. But in essence, she was asking, but which way is the right way? And Jesus dealt with that question once and for all as he explained that the true worshipers of God worship in spirit and truth. You know, 
The Samaritan religion was characterized by what today uh, we would say would be like a, a very charismatic service. It was exciting. It was joyful. It was lively. It was highly emotional worship. And although that kind of worship was stimulating and left those worshipers feeling good, they were missing something. And folks, those who just concentrate on, on the charismatic expression of God's Holy Spirit are missing something too when they forget the reason that they are there. They lack the basic truths of God that should motivate us to worship Him in the first place. The Jews had an opposite problem. Now folks, I'm going to tell you, they were a lot like Methodists. <laughs> they gathered together and uh, were pretty humble, uh, quiet. Uh, they didn't get excited at their worship in the synagogues. Well folks, they had built their entire culture around the truth that uh, the law of Moses given by God ruled their life. Unfortunately, this kind of belief came as routine as lacing their sandals or washing their hands. They lacked a spiritual, emotional experience that should accompany every experience of great truth that we are made subject to. Now folks, we can sit in our seats and act as if nothing is new, but friends, there is something to celebrate each time we come together. And I don't just mean being, being caught up in some kind of ecstatic emotional experience. I mean knowing the reason we gather, the reason that we celebrate, and let that run through our souls. Friends, we worship today and every Sunday in the shadow of a cross and in the light of the resurrection of Jesus our Savior. We should enter in with the distress of our sinful situation and we ought to leave rejoicing knowing that our sins are forgiven. Now there's just one last lesson I would like us to absorb on this Easter Sunday and that is that the knowledge that we have today needs to change us. The knowledge of the resurrection ought to change every heart. If the events in Jesus' life ended in his resurrection and his glorification and if the promises of jesus made to his followers are true then we can't go on living as if nothing has changed we can't go on living as the world does just going on its way seeing that there is no hope uh, just doing for ourselves as if this life was all that there is we who were once blind can now see, and we come into the light and the truth of Jesus our Lord. Our testimony is of the God of love who sent his Son to save us from death and destruction. There's a hymn in our Cokesbury hymnals that speaks of this kind of change. It's number 84. Since Jesus came into my heart, it's one of my favorites. I love to sing it. Rufus McDaniel, who penned its words, had experienced a real change in his faith life the one that comes in every worshiper of jesus christ when real change is made i want you to listen to this hymn's words for they express the desire of rufus's heart and my heart too listen what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since jesus came into my heart i have lied in my soul for which long i had sought since Jesus came into my heart, I have ceased from my wandering and my going astray since Jesus came into my heart. And my sins, which were many, they're all washed away since Jesus came into my heart. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart. There's a light in the valley of death for me now since Jesus came into my heart. And the gates of the city beyond I can see since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Friends, I suggest as a good way to close our worship today that we sing that song as part of our religion, as our praise, our recognition, and our thanksgiving to the God who has gathered us together to celebrate this great day. 
Because friends, when Jesus has come into our hearts, we truly can have reason to celebrate. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Amen.